number one Iron Age booty daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, have you heard that apparently Marvel and DC and all those cape flicks that they've been doing for the last like 15 years are a danger to society and our culture? Boy, howdy, that's an interesting take. I slightly disagree, but let's go over what Martin Scorsese said in his interview with GQ. And this one was actually brought to me by Bounding Into Comics, guys. So if you guys haven't been over there, if you haven't seen the article, I will leave that link down in the description below so you guys can go check out Bounding Into Comics. And if you guys like what I am doing here, please do me a favor and like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell. But with all that YouTuber crap out of the way, let's get into it. So, Martin Scorsese, on with GQ. He went after the comic book here, superhero films again. He has done this in the past, and he said they're not cinema. Uh, and I believe he refers to them here as audiovisual entertainment. And to be perfectly honest, I do somewhat agree with him there. Uh, I actually very much agree with him there. Uh, that's why my wife and I and the kids, we don't even watch a lot of the movies anymore. In fact, I don't think we've seen any of them this year. But one of the things that I highly disagree with him about is him tagging a genre. You see, superhero films and comic book films as a whole aren't what's ruining the culture of film and movies. What it is, is one of the things he lists here, and another thing that he never talked about. But it is the absolute ideological writing that seems to be infesting the movies from movie to movie to movie, which could actually be a cause of one of the things I really, really, really agreed with him on. So, let's get into that point here. He said, uh, they are sequels in name, but they are remakes in spirit, and everything in them is officially sanctioned because it can't really be any other way. Stop. I disagree with that point. The first Iron Man movie was not that way, right? It wasn't officially sanctioned, nor was probably one of the best Batman movies to ever be made, which was The Dark Knight. Now, I know people go back and forth on that. They say Batman 89. A lot of people... I. Personally, not a big fan of Batman 89. I like The Dark Knight as my personal favorite Batman movie ever. Although, I do agree with a lot of people. We've never really ever actually seen Batman in his prime. We've never seen Batman as Batman. And I guess the Batman 89 is close enough to that. He then goes on to say that that's the nature of modern film franchises. Market research, audience tested, vetted, modified, re-vetted, and re-modified until they're ready for consumption. Yeah, the assembly line of movie making now. All of the passion, spirit, and everything that we used to tell stories with has been promptly removed by mega corporations making sure that they can simply only increase the dollar amount that they make for their shareholders or for, well, I guess their pocketbooks. But along the way, a lot of it seems to have turned very political, a lot of different messaging. See, movies back in the day, especially films that would resonate with society, used to be able to make you think, think about your life, think about the things that you believed. And lately, uh, a lot of the movies that are coming out, especially in the comic book area, they're not making people think anymore. They're making people dig in and say, I'm not moving an inch and screw you, and they're doing it on both sides. So I do agree with him here that part of this is the modern assembly line of film creation. I 100%, I think his take here is absolutely correct. Where he is wrong is it's not just the comic book films. I'm sorry, we've seen this with action films too. I'm an action guy, I love action movies, and to be honest, a lot of action movies out there, these popcorn flicks i'm sorry like the meg are you freaking kidding me that's no come on like i didn't see the second one i just saw the first one i called it that you know the expendables four or expend for bulls as people are calling it was probably not going to do well because let's face it that first one was kind of a member berries thing and as it went on it just got worse and worse and worse and has entered assembly line thinking even the rambo movies got to that point this keeps happening time and time again with a lot of franchises it's not just a comic book superhero movie problem so i highly disagree with his take there i do agree that the assembly line needs to be deconstructed and gotten rid of 
And that brings me to the final point that he made that I really like, which was actually one of the first points that he made, but I'm going backwards in this video. So let's go backwards. He then, he also said, but what I mean to say is you got to rip it out of your skull and your guts, he continued, to find out what the hell you really, what, what do you really feel should be said at this point in life by you. You got to say something with a movie. Otherwise, what's the point of making it? You've got to be saying something. This speaks to a lot of the independents that I have been talking with. A lot of people out there basically say, we don't need to make oodles and oodles of money. They're like, it'd be nice, but we want to say something with what we're doing. We want to harken back to that thing that we loved. And we don't want it to be a rehash, a remake, or a re-sequel, or whatever. And we don't want to do it with an assembly line we want to take a chance and we want to take a risk, which is something that he also did say in this article as well. Taking risk, having one creator come in and do that thing and make that movie happen is a pretty rare thing nowadays. And to be perfectly honest, another thing he never mentioned was the writers. Now, supposedly the Hollywood writers are reaching some deal this week that's going to uh, allow a lot more writers in the writer's rooms, which shouldn't fucking exist. The writer's room, there should be a writer, maybe another writer sitting down with the director and that's it, but and those are my own personal thoughts. But honestly, with all of these writers here, having to have people on staff for these larger type of films, I really don't think you're going to get what Scorsese is calling for. And he is calling for people to make film the way that film and movies need to be made. And he's right. But he missed a critical point in talking about how the inside of the Hollywood machine works how they have to have so many writers, they have to have so many rules, and he was talking about going against those rules. I wish he would have said something about the Hollywood machine. Maybe he did, maybe I missed it. If he did and I missed it, call me out on it. But I was looking for something like that. The rest of his points here are, I mean, the guy is spot on, with the exception that it's not just a comic book movie problem, okay? That's not good. And he didn't call out how Hollywood is functioning right now with the deals that they have to make. But what he is making is a fantastic case for independent film and for independent directors and story writers. So guys, even Scorsese sees the problem with Hollywood. And even Scorsese is calling for maybe somebody like you to give your blood, sweat, and tears, and make film, film once again. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for checking out A Drink With Crazy. I do appreciate it. And if you guys like what I did here, well, stick around and hang around because I talk a lot about independent creation, <laughs> indie creators, indie artists, and I bring a lot of them on for interviews and stuff, and I do a fair amount of covering new projects. So hopefully I see you on the next one. And as always, until next time, Cheers, everybody.